Is it a liquidity grab or is it a break of structure? One of the many reasons traders end up losing many trades is this simple question here. But it's not so simple, is it? Is it a fake out? Is it a liquidity grab or is it a break of structure? In this video, we will cover ways we can find out what it is and how to categorize it. So we can reduce the number of losing trades we take and convert those losing trades into winning trades. So grab a notebook, a pen and let's get started. If you would like to join the academy and be a part of the membership, then click the link in the description. Right, so let's go over the first example. So this example is not very obvious and you will be able to tell because you don't, probably don't know what I'm looking for in terms of the liquidity grab or the breaker structure. But what we can see very clearly is we have this area here that is a piece of liquidity. So all of this here is liquidity, right? So I'm just gonna draw out this line like so. And then we've got this move here. So at this point here, everyone's probably thinking, right, is this a breakage structure or is this a liquidity grab? And the easiest thing to look for after price takes and raise liquidity is do we get a breakage structure from this take and directly from this take, okay? So as we can see, we move up. And when we ask ourselves that question, so the question being, do we get a break of structure after the liquidity grab? We want to start marking out structural points that should get broken. So very clearly, it's going to be this one here. And then as we can see, price pushes down pulls back up again, pulls down, and then we get that breaker structure. So whether you consider wicks as being a breaker structure or candle closes, personally, I go for candle closes, and only in certain circumstances do I go for wicks, which I will probably cover in a different video. But as we can see, price pushes down, and then as we follow price, we can see we continue to move down as well, and then we get this. And I want you to understand something very, very important here. We can see we get this small liquidity grab here, but if we zoom out a bit, we can see we had liquidity built up over here. So from let's say here to there, that's all liquidity right there. And we can see we had a small liquidity grab that moved in to a big liquidity grab. And this here is a liquidity grab as well because it's really this liquidity. And what did it do? It broke structure. What point did it break? It broke this point over here. So that was a very good example of me essentially demonstrating what a liquidity grab is. And now let's go over an example of what a break of structure is. So funnily enough, this actually happened on the same day, same pair, same time frame as well. So let's cover that. So after this liquidity grab that pushed up and broke structure to the upside, that to be fair, I should draw that on just so you can see. We get this move up and move down. So price comes up, comes down, and then pushes back up again, and then comes back down, and then we get this sort of a movement and then we get what we get here. People will ask, is this a liquidity grab? So very clearly we can see it's not a liquidity grab. Even though we had liquidity built up here, we can see price is trending, especially after what happened here where we get the breaker structure. We know that price is supposed to trend in this upward direction. So something like this would be classed as a breaker structure. With breaker structure, it is also very important to understand that you will get liquidity with it, as we can see by moving out and uh, looking at a zoomed out perspective, we had liquidity here. But as long as price doesn't break structure after liquidity grab, we are fine. And as we can see, we don't. The structural point that would have been of importance at this point will be this one here, because this is the higher low for the uptrend. And as we can see, we don't get to break it which means that price continues to the upside. Even though candles like this sometimes do look like they are liquidity grabs, you shouldn't be baited by this and should hold firm with your rules. So again, when we get a move that takes liquidity, but we are trending, we want to ensure that this structural point here doesn't get broken. And as we see, it doesn't get broken. And what does price do? It continues to move up. At this point here, this might confuse a lot of people. We get this engineering of liquidity here, and then price takes it and then comes back down again. Now, these are situations where there's not much volume in the market, so it's essentially a rangy market. So as you can see, this whole thing here is just range. But other than that, we now know what the clear differences are between a liquidity grab and a breaker structure. Now, there is one other type of liquidity grab slash breaker structure scenario we'll go over, and we'll cover that now, which I think is quite important because a lot of people get confused with that one too. Okay, so the final example. And as you can see, you probably guessed what I'm probably gonna talk about, and that is this candle here with a massive wick to the downside. Now, as you can see, this candle is a NFP candle, because it's at 130 or some sort of news candle. I'm not quite sure, I haven't really uh, been trading recently, but what we can see is it pushes down and it grabs liquidity. Ignoring the fact that this was a news candle, candles like this do present themselves quite often. 
we have this one here, we have this one to the upside, and the question is, is it a liquidity grab or is it a breaker structure? With candles like this, we have to understand there's a lot of momentum in the market, and so when price breaks through and pierces key structural points, like the ones to the left, we need to understand that this is pure momentum and pure reaction from news. So in my opinion, this would count as a liquidity grab. And as we can see, why is because we get that move to down, we've taken uh, liquidity from these lows here, and then we've gone and we've broken structure. And the structural point we broke was this one over here, very nice and clearly, and then we've continued to the upside. Um, if we compare it to this green little wick here, we've pushed up, we've taken this liquidity, just there and then we've pulled down and we haven't really broken structure so we uh so yeah that would be just a liquidity grab again but this one just took liquidity and continued with trend so we're like a smaller one compared to this one now we can see another example of this over here and i think this was during the asian session yes it was just uh well it was actually frankfurt open this candle here so we have this like rangy asian session here price wicks down grabs liquidity Got a nice little pool of liquidity here with these equals and then price essentially pulls up and continues in its current direction and that's what price is doing actually right now so as we can see we've got the liquidity grab and then we get the breaker structure straight after it so either breaking this high here or this high here whichever one you'd say is the better structural point and then we can see we continue to the upside very nicely so that's us covered with our examples with what liquidity grab is and why is it different to a breaker structure and which one is it when you are looking at between a liquidity grab and a breaker structure. So a couple of you have reached out in my comment section and asked me about what settings do I use for this indicator. So I'm going to share that with you now. So just have a look at this and you know, pause the video as and when you need to and make sure everything is aligned with everything that you see over here and I'll go through it somewhat slowly so you guys can see what my settings are. Now, remember you can tweak these yourself and change them. For example, the times of the Asian session, London session, and the New York session. That all depends on um, what you think the timings of the sessions are. And that is fine, to be fair. Some people have different modes and yeah. So there you go. Um, reason being I took off hours here is because when you go in the hourly time frame or higher, it does get really annoying because everything gets quite cramped in and stuff and you don't really want that there. So, you know, when I go into the hourly here, as you can see, everything is nice and um, clean. So there you go. Thank you for watching this video. If it helps you, make sure to drop a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.